This week's episode of This Is Only A Test is made possible by the fine folks at MailChimp. MailChimp is an easy-to-use marketing platform with a name that might make it sound like they only do email, but they do just about everything to help businesses grow, like ads, postcards, landing pages, audience management tools, automations, reports, and more. You could say MailChimp grew so much that they outgrew their name, and their marketing tools can help you do the same. Go to MailChimp.com to sign up for free and see how MailChimp can grow your business. MailChimp, they do more than mail. Email. Okay, let's start the show. For Thursday, April 18th, 2019, welcome to This Is Only a Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to this fine, well, Tuesday that we're recording this week. I'm Norm, joined by Jeremy Williams. Hola. And if you listen to Still Entitled, the Adam Savage Project, early in the week, you'll know that our third seat this week is Will Smith. Hi. I'm here. It's part two. Old it's school. Part two. We're I'm... doing the podcast, the tested podcast, cinematic shared universe, pod, shared podcast universe. What's the acronym for that? Where's my dubstep? Oh. <laughs> Where's got, my It's too late now. You've ruined it, Jeremy. <laughs> right. You can't you can't make this back. Oh, sorry. Uh it's uh. the Tested Podcast Universe, the TPU. <laughs> I, only, I only have one simple request. Mm -hmm. Dubstep. That's I all I want. I know. I haven't read your writer. <laughs> and so uh, you heard in the th opening theme the big news this week of course is Star Wars Celebration we will be talking about none of that on this podcast if you want to hear about 40 minutes of talk about Star Wars Celebration our impressions on the trailer on the news of the title for episode 9 about the Mandalorian about Jedi Fallen Order and even looking back at our thoughts on The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi some controversy in the room uh, you'll have to go download Still Untitled for this week and listen there and if you wow. listen to Still Untitled and are just tuning in from that thank you for jumping podcasts and for listening to This Is Only a Test Will's typically not here no, I'm hardly ever here. I know, I know. Um, I'm not coming back if you don't play the dubstep next oh, time. Oh, but we need you for maybe in four episodes, maybe well, in a month or so. Well, we you'll have to ask really nicely and play the dubstep. That's all <laughs> I want. I'm so glad Gary has no writer. It's important that you don't give it Gary any leverage no, whatsoever. Yeah. What, is, what is a writer? Is there a form, a blank form? It's a contract. Yeah, yeah. It's really boring. There's yeah. all sorts of subheads and mm -hmm. bits and chunks. and Of, of which yeah. one is? Play the fucking dubstep norm. At some point. Did not Jeremy. say when or yeah. where or whether for broadcast or not. Uh, Episode 496, that's where we're at right now. So officially one month away from mm -hmm. 500. So wow. is, is 500 the important episode or is it 501? 500. All right. How, hey. many, how many podcasts get to 500 episodes? Three. At this point. I think there's only three. <laughs> it's, we're the fourth? Yeah, it's like Logan's so. run. You know, the, yeah. the, the gem starts blinking <laughs> and at 500 and then all yeah. the mics go silent. I mean, in reality, that probably happened about episode 70 been all downhill from there i could say that because i was there for the first 300 or so 200 i can't remember when i quit yeah i don't know hey we yeah. promised on uh, the first half of this and still entitled that we talk about um dad stuff yeah how was your car trip with the with the child for the first time so you have a tesla model 3 and you've you've done one have you done a road trip in that before i have just by myself mm. okay i drove nice. down myself to la and I drove back at like right. uh, 11 p.m at night is when i drove back but this is your first one with the family with and the with family. enhanced autopilot Am I right? That's uh, uh, with you, the na navigate on autopilot. Thank you. you. New one. Did you update? You, so you paid for the th for the self driving package. I paid for a tier one. The self driving package is all different now. The, the, the what they had pr have offered to Model Three owners and Model S owners a year ago is different than they what they offer now. The okay. prices are lower, and, but the feature set like every is few weeks different. they change the prices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, they're prerogative. Well, so when I looked the other day, it was five grand to get like self parking and stuff, but that also comes with all the 
all the self-driving stuff too. It's less than that. It's like three grand. It looked like five. They just a, lowered a, it a, like a, this yeah. week. They, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, they lowered this it again. This was last week maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I have the f- tier, the first tier. It's not the level as a guideline by the National Highway Safety and Transportation Administration. Yeah. Uh, but it is... Uh, Stay. It's basically cruise control plus. So okay. uh, the previous is called EAP, enhanced autopilot. So you get your uh, dynamic cruise control. Uh, it stays within the lanes. And recently, with the software update, you get what's called navigate an autopilot, which means that uh, it will look at your maps, and if you have a route plotted in, it will automatically change lanes for you to get in the correct lane to take off ramps and change freeways with no so confirmation. Like, now, previously required a confirmation, which was uh, and that's a toggle. Previously, it was mandatory that you had to use the turn signal yeah. yourself that which would it would prompt you to say a lane change needed and in the graphic you would see like the the line like can you remember in the Batman Begins when he's driving <laughs> no. the Batmobile and the tumbler and he's there's like a, a graphic of like the path that lays before him and like a oh, path and you can that go goes down around, in the hole yeah and then he gets a weave between traffic yeah. that's what this is essentially we huh. all have batmobiles now if you want to go at 100 I miles per hour I'm okay but basically you see the line that guides your car it's almost like a Gran Turismo line and it kind of it shows it going to, off to the next lane, and then for you to actually match it, you just tur- hit the turn signal once, and then if it's all safe and your blind spot is clear, it will speed up a little bit wow. and move you in. That was a couple as of a couple months ago. Now, as of like two weeks ago, if you got the update, you can pay less uh, attention. You can pay slightly less attention, although you still have to in, in, con- confirm with a nudging. Of the steering you wheel, you still have to have your hand on the wheel. That's it. That's exactly. That's what great. It is. You have to have your hand on the wheel, which is confirm that you are paying attention. Yep. But you don't have to actively say turn. Uh huh. But then with your hand on the wheel, it will change your lanes. So, because legally you are still in control. That is correct. So okay, my question for you: This is a thing we talked about years and years ago when this was just a glimmer in young Elon Musk's eye. Yep. Do you feel like this makes you more or less attentive as a driver? Less attentive, one hundred percent. Okay. Do you think but, that that is a good thing or a bad thing? But for a, I mean, and, and that's not because I want to be less attentive. I think by, I ju- think just by having the car take over so many of those responsibilities, yeah. I am still aware of the road, but it's less of that drain. Now, the flip side is on a road <laughs> trip where it's a nine hour drive back because of the stops, bathroom stops, and charging, I'm much more awake by the end of it because I'm not so physically and mentally drained by this. Focus on the road. Really? I mean, that, that's that like not having to manage, like not like a driving down five, not a difficult road to keep it in between the lines because yeah. it's basically straight for 300 miles. That's true. It's only like four turns I need to do, right? On 101 to 152, 152 yeah. to the five, and then over the mountain. Yeah. Uh. So, so do, I mean, but I, I guess, I mean, it does wear on you constantly having to watch and, and it does make you tired having to keep it, keep it in between the lanes. Anyone and who's done and a late thing. night yeah. road trip. Needs caffeine, and I've done that. Yeah. I've done road trips where I need to stop and like down walk around, enough, do some jumping know, five jacks. hour energy exactly. Yeah. Like it's, and now uh, the stops are more frequent because I have to charge the car, and being forced to do like a forty five minute stop really is healthy. First of all, I mean that's true. You get up, you walk around, you maybe have a snack, you, yep. you go to the bathroom. That that's good for you. Change a baby energy. Yep, and then. In those, when you when I'm getting back late, like I think we got back at 11 p.m. And then the first time I did, I got back at 4 a.m. There were times where I'm like really tired, but the, the faith in the car and mm-hmm. still having to provide input like it makes that I feel a lot more safer. So a lot more safe. So okay, so this is the first road trip with the baby, which is I think like more important than the Tesla. Well, that's a hard well, thing. I considered it, since it was also the first trip with the baby, not using autopilot, but I, I'm so. I, <laughs> Because I'm like, I trust you. Just, the car you trust with the Elon baby? Musk that yeah, much? You, you considered it. it. I considered it, and then like five minutes on the road, I'm like, Yeah, hell no, autopilot's okay. going on. Do you discuss? Do you discuss this with your wife? Well, big points for considering it there, North. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I also considered those different like aggressiveness settings for changing lanes. Yeah. Because not only will it navigate an autopilot, uh, not only will it help you get in the right lane for uh, off ramps, but it'll also take a look of the traffic around you, and you can be aggressive. You can have a Mad Max mode or an aggressive driving mode where but, but, if your target s- speed <coughs> is, for example, the speed limit, like 65 or 70 miles per hour, and traffic in front of you is a slow car, autopilot will go around the car. Like on the shoulder? It w- not on the shoulder. In, oh, the, in, in the passing lane. The far left turn lane, the passing lane. Okay, that's But fine. that is an aggressiveness setting that you can change. Yeah. And I had it on the second to 
most did, comfortable. Did you discuss this with your wife? Did you like, you're like, hey, honey, I'm trusting the safety of my she, family she to was this in, machine? She was informed. Okay. She was informed. Does she the sat car in the back with tell the car. you? That, that turns are about to happen? There's a chime. No, no. Does the car tell you it's an Does it say autopilot engaged? No, it's just a chime. It's like, oh. doo-doo-doo. With all due respect to Norm, I, I, you, you probably know this, but maybe not everybody knows this, that, that Norm is... You know, he's not given driving lessons anytime soon. Like, he's not the world's best driver. What? What? On the highway. Wow. So, honestly, I, I can what? kind of feel where Danica's coming from. Where, where are you getting this I from? I would say Norm is a very, uh, of our friend circle, he is a definitely top 20%. Driver? Yeah. I mean, our friend circle has some really bad drivers in it. Is though, that because you're an especially aggressive I, driver, I, I've Jeremy? I've gone to many events with Norm, and I've, I've, I've noticed... Uh, a Boy. few times, just <laughs> wow. a, a feeling of feeling. Hey, hey things that annoy less, me less is a yeah. section. I feel is, like it's <laughs> the like end of the podcast. Skipping to the end already, huh? <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe with podcast maybe, or with autopilot or without autopilot. Danica, maybe I get where you're coming from and saying the autopilot is not a bad idea. Oh, trust the machine. Well, I mean, Elon mm-hmm. Musk says that you know he imagines mm-hmm. in two years human intervention in driving will make things l- significantly less safe. What, what I will, that's just his marketing speak. What I will say is that since Norm, since it became illegal for you to use your phone while you were driving, Norm has become a much better driver. How's that? Or much more? No. Yeah, much better driver. Much better driver. Much driver. That's right. Yeah. Much better. Driver. I think you know. Back to your point about it making you feel like uh, you're a less attentive driver. Yeah. I think that's the express point of autopilot of of uh, autopilot in general because it's heading towards full autopilot. Right. So every incremental advance that they make there is going to naturally make you feel less in, less engaged. Yeah. That's, though, that's, a, that's, that's by design. That right? is a natural consequence. It's just unfortunate that we're still in this period where you still technically and legally need to be in 100 percent. Engaged, and also the less the, the any amount of disengagement has an inverse relationship with s- safety. Um, when not all things are equal, not when not all cars and not all drivers yeah. are working on the same plane. So, so mm-hmm. then my my question is like, you're driving along, the car gets to something that it doesn't know how to handle. Yeah, or or, or something happens that, directly actually, in front of you. I that's when I, so. My awareness now yeah. is about things further out. So you're not micromanaging the day, the moment to moment driving. You're just yeah. focused on the big picture. You're a man, you're middle management now. That's, oh, that's, right. that's a middle, Congratulations, middle management Norm. driver. Yeah, that's right. I'm focusing on. Hey, look, there's a the shoulders getting narrower in half a mile. Maybe yeah. I should be uh, take control. Or hmm. you know, there's a, a a little bit of construction. Okay, I'm definitely not using autopilot when there's construction. So you're thinking, you're considering okay. the limitations of the autopilot. Yes. So that's great based on my experience with it. Do you think most Tesla drivers do the same thing? I think so. not. No, I, I think so because <laughs> there are definitely times when the machine thinks it's safe based on the information it has yeah. and the h- human level of comfort in those situations, like when the shoulders are narrower, mm-hmm. like when it's a high mm-hmm. speed off ramp. Like, we just learned that it doesn't know the difference between um, you know, traffic that's going the same direction and oncoming traffic. Yeah. It just knows it's a different lane. It's just a car. Yeah. yeah. Jesus, yeah. really? Now, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one in- <laughs> scenario. This has nothing to do with the, driving the kid. And driving the kid down was... Great, he slept, and we stopped at Casa de Fruta. Uh, there's some great places, Kettleman City Supercharger. Get some pea soup. Uh, did not get any Anderson's pea soup, <sighs> uh, but the Kettleman City Supercharger is amazing. That's like has 40 spots. Um, it's basically that, that's like the a, one where uh, In and Out is, right? Yeah, it's In yeah. and Out's there. Got some In and Out, and, and you know, and 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 stay there for an hour. Clean bathrooms, wonderful. Um, while in LA, because I was there for a couple days and had to drive back and forth. Uh, one, I. Uh, I was worried about the charge situation because I stayed in Pasadena where Monster Palooza was, but I needed mm-hmm. to make my way down to Inglewood. And there's no gas stations. Like, the gas station, there's a charge station like in downtown LA. Yeah. So the one I had to go to was at SpaceX. Boom. Wow, and really? It was the day. I didn't, why is there so much activity? And the SpaceX supercharger uh, is right in the facility by this squeeze between the Tesla Design Center there yeah. and SpaceX XS Space. SpaceX, like a giant <laughs> building with SpaceX on the side awesome. with a rocket yeah. right on the front. Yeah. Like one of the Falcon 9 boosters right yeah. there. And uh, there were like six spots, a lot of Teslas. There were some like SpaceX specific reserve spots yeah. for supercharging, maybe well, some like of the a, higher like a, ups. Like a Model X. But it was the uh, day yeah. that they landed all three yeah. um, on, on the barge and on the landing pads. And so a lot of buzz of activity. And I was like, where is oh my god that's SpaceX that's a really nice segue Norm that's actually where I land uh, watched the, um, the, the the episode the teaser the teaser I, I parked in the car and I, and I looked I was charging and like for half an hour I was like oh what's going on in internet oh my god the episode nine teaser is out yeah and so I put my phone down turned on internet tethering 
got my iPad Pro. Oh my God! And tethered the biggest wow. screen possible. The biggest yeah. screen I had <laughs> in my car. You know, HDR, YouTube. Uh, tethered my iPad to my phone for internet, then tethered Bluetooth to my car's speakers. Yeah. Wow! Maxed out the volume, and it was good. It's it was, pretty it was, good. It was a good way to watch the trailer. Uh, one more thing, I will say, a life. I would say a life saving moment maybe oh. with autopilot. Okay. Right? Okay. Here we go. Having to drive between Pasadena and LA, uh, LA is very warm, very Turns dry. Out. It's a different type of climate than I'm used to in San Francisco. Yeah. Oftentimes your, when your I get down there, my nose gets dry. Yeah. Um, I had a massive nosebleed. Yeah. In 65 mile an hour traffic. Yeah. Driving in LA. Yeah. Uh, and I autopilot maybe saved my life. Wow. Because I had to deal with the nosebleed and yeah. could not what hold the wheel. What color is your interior? Uh, it's it's black, but I was I was you know yeah, you wearing, wearing normal clothes, and, and it was a it was like one of those I felt the nose I did a heavy sneeze and yeah. I felt the nosebleed coming. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have Gross. any tissues. Well, oh no, so <laughs> so this is an Elon Musk problem. They should put a tissue holder in that car. And th- there's plenty of cavities that you could put tissues, but what uh-huh. I did have uh, was a a dog pee pad. Gross. What the hell, dude? You know, that's what they use for <laughs> combat war, um, injuries now. You know, like, I, we have a dog, yeah. and in the car, I have an emergency pee pad if uh-huh. we never need to go take the dog someplace. In case Norm has to go and he's taking the dog someplace. And it's very absorbent, and it's like like a three-foot-by-three-foot thing. Yeah. And on one side, it's slippery, yeah. and one side is very And I, that yeah. looked like... It looked like an offense. It looked like it came out of a, a surgery. You see, gross. So you're saying this whole life-saving yeah. moment yeah it saved your life autopilot saved your life and everyone else in the car yeah oh no, it was just me oh, just me okay good i was the only one just so that you could have a bloody nose and not drip it on your car mm, not not have it drip in the everywhere. clothes you could have yeah, certainly done that look have you ever seen norms that have a bloody nose before it's gross it's, it's, I, it's like a everywhere. fucking zombie movie man it's everywhere i've never seen it it is horrific a bloody nose is very uncomfortable have yeah. you ever seen the evil dead yeah it's kind of like that would you just have I mean, also when you have a bloody nose, you gotta like lift your head up and yeah. pinch you your nose. Yeah, you don't have to your lift your head up. That's old school. Yeah, you're not supposed to lift your but, head up. That you know, I was I, I I was scrambling for for things and yeah. uh, and oh, autopilot. I think you're like Tesla. Drive possible. yourself. I hope this was all captured on that internal camera. I'm sure it was. It's somewhere right. in their database. <laughs> Someone at Tesla headquarters. Wow, that is, is a lot of blood. It, it's like. Ooh, car model, VIN number, like, yeah. 68,000 over there. Not looking so good. <laughs> put, 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 hey, hey, Biff, put this one in the nosebleed file. This is a good one. Jeremy's re- uh, referring to the fact that all the Model 3s have a tiny camera by the rear view mirror. That's not that, creepy. Um, that you can definitely put a sticker over. Um, it, it's not currently put to use, but Elon says it will be put to use once they begin their rental service, and yeah. you can lease your mm. Tesla to the public, to yeah. Uber, essentially. Just what I want is the public in my personal car. Well, it could pay for your car. Just what I want is the public in my <laughs> car. <laughs> Follow the money. Hey, the, the end result is the car did fine. Yeah. I got no blood on my clothes or blood. on the car. Outstanding. Resale value intact. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And um, autopilot worked for me. I think the first time we took the kiddo on a road trip, we went to Bakersfield, and we just left after bedtime and got to Bakersfield for that for that stage show, that Jamie and Adam oh, yeah, stage yeah, yeah. show, yeah. at like one o'clock in the morning, maybe. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's pretty late. Yeah. Yeah, and she didn't notice because she was in the car carrier, so she slept in the car carrier that night, yeah. and it was very the car carrier makes that kind of stuff easier. Yeah, it's good to have a kid that can sleep in the car. Yeah, it might ruin their sleep that following night, but at least yeah. during the drive, just put them back in the right. car; it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, all right, that's a little mix of tech and catch up. So let's uh, let's move on to our first formal segment. Are we doing top story this week? You are. We are. Mm-hmm. Oh. Wow. Oh, so you play that music. <laughs> Top story this week. Star Wars. Nope. No. You got to listen to Stone Title. <laughs> it's 40 minutes of Star Wars talk there. It uh, looks okay, I guess. <laughs> but I just, we do have a new story this week. It is more technology related. Now, Wired Magazine got an exclusive uh and timing is interesting on this because we are two months out from, a month and a half out from E3, but Sony divulged some details about their work on the PlayStation 5. Now notice- Well, we don't know what's called that, but yeah, the next generation PlayStation. Sure. Yeah. Next generation PlayStation. One, two, three, four, You know the six. PS logo. <laughs> the, the PS logo, the S, could be made to look like a five. It could be an eight, too. Yeah, they got a cool font, right? It's because it's an 8K. 
It's got so, AKs in there. The, without this is the, the the we were the story because it was not an announcement. It was not con- confirmation on a lot of things, but it was kind of like talking around the areas of research mm-hmm. and the, a pathway for development. So things that were that were divulged, uh, how long they've been working on it, which okay, like four years they've been working on it. Uh, developers have units now, perhaps. They they said that they said that they're first shipping first party definitely kits. yeah probably should which means that third party big AAA third parties are getting stuff soon so I would assume like Insomniac has dev kits stuff like that as evidenced by stuff later in the in the article as well they're going to be running um, AMD hardware for CPU GPU same as last third gen, gen Ryzen and uh, some Radeon thing some Radeon thing with ray tracing being potentially a flagship feature not a big surprise given that. NVIDIA just came out with that as their flagship feature. But does it matter for, for home entertainment, for games? So my guess is that we'll see ray tracing used in extremely limited circumstances given the generation of hardware that's in here. Yeah. So things like puddle reflections, like a relatively small number of pixels will end up having ray trace reflections. I, oh. You know what I was intrigued by was the developer, the, who I don't know, who was interviewed? The, Mark Cerny. He suggested that there were other uses for ray tracing beyond graphics. That that's the obvious use case, but you can also apply the same tracing math to f- find out if uh, if you can hear an enemy or if an enemy can hear you. It makes sense. So waves, right? Yeah, exactly. Light is, light is just waves. I think that's really they interesting. Bounce off, yeah. So there's a couple of weird things about like there's a really breathy extended like four paragraph bit in here where they're talking about an immersive audio yada 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 and it's HRT like Hardware accelerated HRTFs, which are head related transform functions or something like that, head relative transform functions. It's been around for have a been long around time. since the 90s. Yeah. Right. It is literally a, there was a diamond, REL made accelerator chips for that that could do a relatively finite number of streams. Mm-hmm. Yep. But still, that existed in like 1999. Um, the fact that but, they're but hardware not, accelerating it is interesting. But it's not something that really is put into effect on game console hardware. Well, uh, because they don't, you don't wear headphones you when you play headphones. game consoles. Well, and this article states that the best way to experience these, that audio feature will be with headphones. Well, my, will be in VR. My guess is that they have a fair amount of data that says, hey, people play head, with headphones now on their game consoles. My son does. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I, I don't know, but if I'm playing a shooter, just, I'm almost always wearing headphones. Just now. to be clear, what Norm just said about VR, he, he, unfortunately, nothing was said about VR besides the fact that it will still support current gen PSVR as well as being backwards compatible with current PlayStation 4 games. That's right. Uh, PlayStation 4 is all they said. They didn't say anything about PS3 or what that kind of uh, whether emulation or, or uh, but those the, uh, PS4 the way that's designed with. Basically, off-the-shelf hardware. There's no specific cell chip or anything like that. It's um, it would make sense that there would be compatibility. It's the same general, you know, architecture. Yeah. It's just improved components. Which also means that a lot of the games that we may have seen being announced speculation is, you know, like Death Stranding may be a game like right. uh, in previous generations that work on both a four and whatever the next PlayStation. Being, is. Like something like Dreams, it could open up. Like th- what you could build with it, right? You build your your RAM. You have more more memory, yeah. so your number of blocks you can put in the world, number of objects is uh, augmented. Eight uh, K is another thing they they talked about. You're talking about the graphics resolution, yep. which I, I would assume that's like four K on the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro, in that it works for some stuff but is limited and or slow. Yeah, has how many I, how many games actually render natively even at four K on, I mean, on the current hardware? I'd be happy if they promised 4K, you know, 90 hertz native uh, as a as a baseline for for target uh, rendering, as opposed to saying, well, this can also do 8K for you know the zero percentage of people who have 8K yeah. displays. I, I feel like we're past the point of diminishing returns on resolution. Uh, I mean, frankly, past 4K, I don't think anyone's going to care. Guess what? Guess what? You would need those besides that bragging for. rights. Um, you would need it if you were going to render a higher resolution high res VR. VR headset. Absolutely. So Absolutely. maybe that's another. That's a way of, for them to say, if we can push out 8K pixels, yeah. then we could render at high frame rate enough for a much higher resolution But you have VR to wonder solution. like how how much does VR weigh in their you know, pricing they things told out? You the, They've sold 4 the million sold, VR yeah, headsets. Four million yeah. VR, they, they care. They've sold 90 million PS4s. I know. That, that is a small percentage of mm. their base. My guess is that the attach rate for people who bought VR headsets is way better than the attach rate for the other mm-hmm. 86 million All they need are a couple there. more Beat Sabers. 
Right. It's been successful for them. I hope that it is a major part of their strategy because the PSVR is a solid platform. It just lacks. Well, use a, it use existing controller exactly. hardware. Exactly. Well, yeah. It, it was kind of yeah. an afterthought. And if they could do it from the ground up with well tracked controllers, and it, like the headset's already decent, but if they could boost that to something massive like 4K or even 8, that'd be awesome. Well, and and here's the other thing that's interesting is like right now PSVR is a kind of fractured platform in that if you're a dev and you're building like a game like Falcon Age, which came out last week, is really really neat. You should check it out if you have a PSVR. Yeah. Um, if you don't have like they build it for move controllers mm -hmm. with VR, DualShock 4 with VR, and also DualShock 4 with the normal 2D TV. So they have essentially three different games and three different UI mechanisms that they had to build and test for. It's really complicated. It would be really nice in a future generation if they said, okay, PSVR is this. Some hand controllers that track in all three dimensions, not just two and kind of the third. Yeah. And that's the platform for PSVR going forward. I, I would I would hope that they do that. Yes. I so agree. that so that developers can choose DualShock, but assume that everybody has access to the moves so they can just build stuff for Yeah, move, you gotta bundle if that makes more sense. Bundle the hand controllers yeah. with the headset. With the headset, um, not necessarily with whatever the PlayStation is. Right. Yeah. So the rumor I heard about this story is that Wired had access to some leak and Oh, they were gonna publish anyway? And they were gonna publish anyway. Huh. And that's I heard that from a couple of different places. Okay. Um, so this wasn't part of a plan. So this may not have been part of a concerted rollout. Yeah. The other thing, timing-wise, is not 2019. Right. I don't think that's a surprise. And they're not even doing a keynote at E3. Yeah. Like looking, look. Well, everybody's bailing out at E3. It sounds like. Um, looking at the looking at the timing on uh, seven nanometer, like right now, like how much how much seven nanometer chips you can buy. I keep sagging. Sorry, Jeremy. Um, like the the fabs are booked because of mobile stuff that's running at seven, seven nanometer now, hmm. and presumably there will be more more availability so that they won't have supply constraints. Because because like if you look at the other stuff they talked about with the APU, which presumably is still an APU, we don't know. It might be a separate GPU and CPU this go What's around. What's APU? Um, I don't remember. It's it's AMD's acronym for a GPU and CPU gotcha. on a system, not a system on a chip, but GPU and CPU. And memory controller and PCI Express lanes and all that stuff on one accelerator on one processing unit. Yeah, um, it's basically fusion. It's basically the chips that are in the Xbox 360, uh, Xbox One, and PS4 are APUs okay. that are custom. So it looks like it looks like they're doing a thing that lets them have many many cores in the in the CPU. Um, using a, there was an Anantech article that I can't get to open now because Anantech seems to be down. Um, but yeah, th that and then. The GPU is the seven nanometer. Uh, what is it? Riva? Is that what they're calling it? Does that excite you? Um, seven nanometer. Seven nanometer is really good. I mean, every time they reduce that. Navi. Every time they reduce that, you get faster processing, less, less heat. heat. More, yeah, more, more speed, less heat. And, and this is seven nanometer is one of the last steps we're going to be able to make, right? Presumably, given given existing technology. Mm. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I don't know. It looks like they're building something massively parallel. Which is unusual. It's it's kind of like the old isn't that like PS3? <laughs> kind of like the old PS3 stuff. I was gonna say, but that's being reductive and and crappy. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the, I'm the, interested the, in this. Here's this good. the the good trend. The good trend will, is that it is dedicated hardware locally, whereas there is a trend ac across all the uh, console makers, uh, Microsoft, Sony, and even non traditional um, makers now, like Google, right. for streaming. Um, and a lot of technology that graphics companies like NVIDIA are building are for optimized for server farm rendering. Uh, you're we're still, for the foreseeable future, are going to be able to buy very powerful game consoles to have in the home to render locally, not to deal with anything like latency. And these things can perhaps move concurrently so you can have, if you want to spend the however many hundreds of dollars to buy that and also subscribe to a streaming service, uh, you can do that as well. And that's, uh, that's what I like. Do you foresee a time when it is... Streaming only? I think uh, they said disc-based games will be, I think that that's the next step, right? No, no, no disc. I mean, it'll Microsoft. Still be dedicated to... hardware, but hard drive, yeah. some local rendering. Uh, but I don't foresee the Google plan that being the standard five years. I, I mean, this generation, at least. Even the, ne the next, the upcoming generation. But potentially beyond that, yes. 20 years, who knows? Jeez. I, I mean, I, it's scary. I mean, so, well, so, so is, you know, your kids never having to get a driver's license. 
Microsoft is is has been rumored to have that that no disc no optical disc Xbox for a while, which presumably is something they'll announce at E three or sometime between now and then, um, which would which is basically an Xbox One X One S rather with no optical drive that's just for playing downloadable games that presumably is just a, basically a front end for Xbox Game Pass. Um, they're pushing that really hard. They just had it on sale for a dollar. It's so, where the money is, right? And where the, well, if, if subscriptions and where the subscriptions is where the business people are interested in, it, then the the product side will follow. It, what it's was where the money for the platform holders is, is not necessarily for the developers sure. and the publishers. Yes. What did you call it? Game Pass? Game Pass. It, Game, Game Pass is their Netflix service. But it's not a streaming service. But not yet. It's a, right. But it's like Apple's gaming service. Like you subscribe you, and you, you get... You subscribe and you get access to a library of a couple hundred games and you yeah. can download them. It's not rendered off site. But in, in the sense that you know, Nintendo, the NES Classic stuff is not a streaming service, but like you have to be online and download their games from the library and they're just small. Well, it's just because those ROMs. games are like 256 kilobytes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the promise of Google, I could totally see being a future where you can get access to whatever game you're playing anywhere with very minimal latency and the save state is, you know, you go from your TV to your phone to a kiosk to an arcade to your workstation at, you mm-hmm. know, to any device, to a hotel room. Uh, that's a c- level of convenience that I think is powerful. Well, I think the – so talking to a couple of developers about the Google thing when I was at GDC, th- like the feeling I got from people who make real games, not the kind of stuff I make, is that is that people are excited because it brings the opportunity to open up games that right now are gated behind a pretty big hardware investment. You know, like you can't play an Assassin's Creed game unless you have a PS4 or an Xbox. And those cost at least 250 or 300 bucks. And like my mom is to- would be totally into playing an Assassin's Creed game set in Egypt, but she's also never going to plug a loud, obnoxious PS4 into her living room TV. So, you know, I, I mean, I think there's a bigger market. I, my point is there's a, just like we found out that there was a much bigger market for games with mobile games when everybody got phones. Yeah, but how do they vend? What do like, you mean? I might be bigger, like that market, but yeah. how do they vend with the people who want to buy the hardware? You know? Oh, I, I mean, I think there's always the people, people who want to buy the hardware. You, you convince those people that as much as they want the hardware, the, the amount of convenience is, is better, and you make it go beyond games, right? For Google, you know, the Google Docs works because you're basically, it, it, it is that for productivity. You know, the OS side is slowly moving to the cloud that way. Yeah. Um, and so why not entertainment? You know, oh, enter- you know, movies, yes, already. Sure. Yeah. Music, already. Absolutely. You know, games is kind of the last thing. Ah. Imagine, imagine. I know, purists. Imagine a world, well, Jeremy. Pur- it's not just purists. It's, it's functionality. It's um, the technical aspects of it. Imagine the world where I'm playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey and you can be the hawk. You can be my hawk. You can just fly around all the time spotting things for me. What is that grabbing streaming? Well, I mean, you could do that with Stadia really easily. Oh, okay. Uh, the other thing is that SSD will be a part of this next PlayStation. Yeah. So this is times. really interesting. Why? Because he was promising a bigger than he was making exceptionally. Certainly, he was making exceptionally bold promises with regard to an SSD. That makes me think that they're probably building something that's like Intel's hybrid SSDs. Oh, um, the RAM caching stuff. The RAM caching ones, yeah. So okay. So right now there's hard drives and you can replace your drives with an SSD uh, and, and get faster load times like with solid 10% state. Like 10% maybe. But he was talking about uh, orders of magnitude from 13 seconds to less than a, a second. A quarter of a second. Time. Yeah, 18.18. And even if you're talking about going to the fastest NAND possible with PCI Express lanes, that's still basically well, it's caching is the only way you can do that. Well, and by optimizing the way your game loads. Like right now on consoles, people do a lot of compute stuff in the background while the game's loading in from the disk because they know they have 20 seconds while the while the game loads in. Um, it's interesting. The load times matter a ton more for VR than for console games because on most console games, you sit on your couch, you have a 20-second load time, you pick up your phone, you look at the phone for a minute. With VR, that, if you take the headset off, you're probably not going to put it back on. So they're really interested in getting rid of load times for, for VR games. Yeah. On the Intel stuff, that's the Optane memory stuff, which yeah. basically you're buying extra, uh, like, what it's is like, that, like 64 Up to 64 gigs, gigs of RAM. Of, of extra store SSD that acts as you know, RAM plus. It's a well, it's, space between the RAM and, and your storage. It's analogous to a, a hybrid drive where, except for with the hybrid drives, it was a bunch of flash memory in front of a spinning platter. And with this, it's a bunch of volatile RAM, high-speed RAM in front of a flash drive. You know, I'm all about 
faster load times. Wonderful yeah. thing, but it that is the most boring Hallmark feature that I've ever heard for a new console launch. So this this is exactly console. this is exactly what makes me excited about VR because the the increments that we're seeing in the VR space are so much have so much more impact. See, you don't I think your perspective on this is off because you play those big games on PC or maybe not at all. Whereas if I'm sitting playing if I'm playing Spider-Man, yeah. those 30 second load times mm -hmm. make me not do things. Like one of the things they demonstrated was actually that the Spider-Man's movement speed through New York in that game is entirely gated by the speed of IO on the PlayStation 4. I don't know, dude. I, I grew up with an, a 2600, went into the NES. Yeah, yeah. I saw the whole 16-bit thing happen. I went to, you know, finally the console got, on, got online. I'm old. What annoys you, Jeremy? Tell me. <laughs> get it out. And what I loved about it, all of that is every single generation, there was something really, really special about the improvements that you mm -hmm. gained. You, finally, we got high definition, you know. that yeah. like The Xbox played a few games in 720p, and it was fantastic. Like You noticed these things. And now we're hearing there's going to be 8K, like I care, and there's like, Amazing hard uh, audio hardware and faster load times. Like that's just not the same thing I think as finally getting you know more colors or, or higher resolution or uh, online capability. We've gotten past the point of magnificent changes. Whereas in the VR space, we're at the very beginning. So you're again. saying for you, it's all magic now. I'm saying it's good enough. Yeah, it's just like the phones. It's like I, you know, I don't need to get a new phone every year because there's not something markedly better about it. Did you get a new phone last year? I got. I still have the ten. Okay. And before that, I had the, whatever the six S. Oh, you didn't do the seven, huh? So, like, okay. I, that's what I. That's right now. VR is maybe the only technology that I feel this way about, where it's at the beginning, and it's we're so rarely and, and at the AR beginning of things. As an extension. Oh, AR is even more so. So, and, and I don't see the end of it. Yeah. I. I mean, I feel like part of this is that part of the problem, and not to slag on Wired because I I love the guys at Wired, but like this is part of the problem with having people reveal this stuff who are the kind of people that check in on what's going on with consoles every time there's a new console every four or five years is that they don't understand the larger context about how people are going to use this stuff in games. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think the idea of open world games where stuff loads in instantly, I, I it, look, it's the same thing as when we were talking about um, how, how we'll use eye tracking in VR or how we'll use AR in games. Like we, we always try to map our old game, genre ideas and concepts onto the new opportunities and what'll happen is when you give this to developers they'll be like oh wait we can just build a game where you can you know jump up to outer space and then come right back down immediately without having to do a big load or, or you know like the, they'll be able to build the load screens into worlds in a way that are much more interesting than like mass effect in-game elevators which masks masked the loads like in, half-life in did, old yeah. games and half-life stuff like that yeah uh the, well, that's the PlayStation Not 5 as the big story this week. Anything more we want to say about that? No? <laughs> no? Seems fine. 5 Not 5. I'm, five, waiting. I'm excited about NAC 3. What's NAC 3? <clears throat> NAC 1 was the launch title for PlayStation 4. Oh. Oh, was, right. Yeah. Was, was that good? No. It was a bad game. <laughs> it's really, was it a good tech demo? Not really. No, it was okay. Bad. I mean, they'll, it had a lot of, like, NAC was made up of a bunch of little polygons, and they all flew together occasionally. So do you think uh, Xbox will launch next year too? I'm interested to see if Xbox launches hardware. Yeah. I mean, I assume they're going to do a, a hardware end box, but I, I, it, who knows at this point? Okay. I mean, they're putting Game Pass on all of the, like it seems like they're going to put game streaming on all the platforms that will let them, you know, including Switch potentially, since now that you can do Xbox Live integration on Switch, and and who knows? Streaming from your X Bone. Is that what you mean? No, I'm talking about. I, I mean, it seems like the, it seems like their move is to move Xbox Game Pass, the play your old Xbox three, play a bunch of Xbox three hundred and sixty and Xbox One and PC games. Now it's local. Presumably, that's going to move to the cloud at some point. Gotcha. And that will be an, an analog to uh, Google Stadia yeah. and all the other stuff that we're seeing. Uh, uh, PlayStation Now that Sony's had for ages, and and presumably they're going to keep doing endpoint hardware but i mean who knows if they don't have to why would they those machines cost billions of dollars to develop so why not just build a cheap streaming box and a gamepad and sell that instead if people are okay with that of course the last time microsoft took a big chance on a console launch they lost the entire generation and blew their xbox the xbox 360 lead so maybe they aren't going to take any chances this time who knows
I really hey, love that theme. There's a Star Wars trailer that came out. No, <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about that. Okay. She uh, skywalks. Uh, uh, but we will talk about Disney because at mm-hmm. the Disney investors call uh, last week, uh, Bob Iger and co uh, announced the details finally to Disney Plus. I can't there's Apple TV Plus, and now there's Disney Plus as well. They're not the same. I can't believe how expensive it is. How cheap it is. How inexpensive. In- so expensive. <laughs> So this is Disney's uh, long-awaited Netflix competitor streaming service as mm-hmm. they start pulling content away from services like Netflix, including the Marvel films. Eventually, uh, they will all be a part of Disney+. Plus. And let's start with the pricing. Yeah, so $7 a month or $70 a year. That is an aggressive, aggressive Isn't pricing that strategy. For, like, That's what Netflix pricing was originally, it's right? It's also a family account, right? Can't you do, do multiple I, I don't know. people within your family? I, if that is, I wouldn't be surprised. Like They want to get people on board, and they know that they're coming in not with any first mover advantage, but with an established marketplace, and they need to come in from position of strength, and that is with aggressive pricing and content. There you go. I think it's great. I so, mean, I was already going to subscribe if it was twice that, like if it was Netflix pricing. So I'm on board. So what's the what's the what's what's on the service? So content lineup. Now uh, you might have heard Disney recently spent uh, north of fifty billion dollars to acquire Fox, Twentieth uh, Century Fox, the uh, media company uh, portion, the Hollywood uh, the TV. So this will be the exclusive streaming place for The Simpsons. That's so Wait, weird. Does this mean when you see Star Wars Episode Four again, it's going to have the Twentieth Century Fox before it again? Maybe. I know that's such an important part of the sense memory. It's interesting. Because yeah. you never get the, da, 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 da. you don't get the Disney. Yeah. Bum, 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 no, I don't care bum, about that. Um, so uh, all the Simpsons, but that's like just gravy. I think you get your Nat Geo stuff. That's all part of the Fox acquisition. That's gravy. Uh, you get the the Marvel movies. Yeah. Every Marvel movie. Yeah. That's good. Uh, you get the Does Disney it, XD stuff. Is but, di- like things could premiere here. Things. Uh, what no, do you mean? I, I don't mean like an, as a not in the theater, but I mean like digitally. Digitally, yeah, you get your digital premieres here. I don't think you ever get digital premieres there because there's still there's still a big branch of home entertainment, Buena Vista Home Entertainment, that makes a ton of money from iTunes sales and yeah. and, and uh, discs. Well, and and remember Disney's whole model, like starting with Walt in the in the fifties, was we start we we the movies are the engine that drives the business. Yep. The movies bring people to the parks. The movies sell merch. The movies get people watching TV. The whole thing. Yeah, I, I think they, what they want to do is you pay to watch. The, you pay four times, right? You're, you're going to pay yeah. to watch the movie in the theater. You're going to pay to get the iTunes copy or the Blu-ray copy, and then you're going to pay the monthly fee to get it on a streaming service. Convenient. And then you might pay for it again to, to watch it on matinee. So in theater again. So, well, I mean, so original content. Though. Yeah, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Star Wars. Yeah, your Star Wars. That Rumored okay. to have a budget of ten million dollars per episode, just that like is, Game of Thrones. That's, that's pretty lot. spendy. Yeah, it's a lot of cheddar, and it's great looking. They were they were, they did a whole talk. We talked about it on Still Untitled, and uh, I'm super excited. It's psyched about it. So Marvel stuff. They're gonna do a K2SO show. Is that right? Oh yeah. Oh sorry. Other Star Wars stuff. Uh, they are doing a um, a Cassian Andor and K2. So he's gonna presumably go murdering a shitload of people because he was a bad man before Rogue One. But this is a live action. Live action. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. I mean that. Um, are there any other Star Wars live action things they announce? Are they getting dude to voice K two SO? Alan Tudyk. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, I I'm interested. Did they like early on? They had hinted that there weren't going to be adult franchises on this Disney Plus service. What do you mean by adult? You know, porn. <laughs> <laughs> no, like like things that are rated R. So like they're like presumably they bought. 20th Century Fox and we have a bunch of Alien and Predator and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like some some gory movies. That's Isn't a Terminator point. a Fox thing too? No, that's Terminator somebody else. Anyway. Uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars. Okay. The the animated... Mm-hmm. You said that... you watched the whole series? Is that what you're saying? Yes, and I think uh, they're going to have the new season, 12-episode season, is going to air on Disney streaming service as well. Oh, so they're doing a new... A new Clone is it, Wars. With, what's his name again? Uh, Gennady... I don't... No, I think it's the Filoni... Okay, okay. And uh, Rebels is going to be there presumably as well, right? Yes, of course. Uh, the Game of Thrones creators, once they wrap up Game of Thrones this next two months, they're going to go work on a TV show. or uh, Sorry, epi- uh, another series of Star Wars movies set outside the episode, so like what Ryan Johnson's working on. So I think they're working on Old Republic stuff. Isn't that the rumor? That They're like a galaxy beyond, like far away from the galaxy we know. 
Oh, that's what okay. that, yeah. isn't that what we yeah. heard? Yeah. yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like a galaxy a even farther, attached. farther. Yeah, no, away. it's even. Well, who knows? Or it could be closer. It could be like a triangle, same distance. That's true. Could Maybe. be equi- equidistant, Less a galaxy far equally far, <laughs> far away. Another direction. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right, the little space is pretty Oof, big. This is very complicated. So Marvel stuff. All right, you got a ton of Marvel limited live action shows yep. based on the character. I think this, along with the Mandalorian, is what's going to get people to subscribe. Swear like you got a Loki TV show, a Loki miniseries. Is it like a buddy cop show? No, probably Loki through the ages, mischief through the ages. Loki's okay. dead. Remember Infinity War? Yeah, nobody in don't, nobody minutes. dies in comic book movies. Yeah. So, but also live action. Live action, starring Loki. Du- starring Loki, starring Tom Holston. I'll be down. He's available. You got a Scarlet Witch and Vision show called WandaVision. What With really they're calling it WandaVision? That's like, WandaVision. That's like Wonka Vision. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You can't pull them out of the TV though. So, <laughs> but uh, it is going to have um, uh, the actor and actress Elizabeth, Elizabeth Olsen and, and Paul Bettany yeah. reprise their roles, and it'll be about their relationship. I, I just want to say they also are both dead. I Infinity went. Dubs, I went back, as of, as of Infinity spoilers, War. man. I went back and watched Infinity War the other day. Yeah, what yeah. do you think? And I'm going to go ahead and say Elizabeth Olsen. I think is the best actor in that whole thing. Because she does all this weird, like, like Hand finger stuff. magic. Yeah. And, and she makes it look cool, man. You believed. I believed. Like, that could have been really hokey and lame, and she makes it look rad. Yeah. That's hard. That's big acting. It's hard. Mm. Big hand acting. Yeah, At hand least. acting. So those are two live action. There's going to be a Bucky and the Falcon buddy. Road trip? Buddy uh, superhero movie. <gasps> who's TV paid, show. Who's paid more there? Oh man, I bet they. I bet they. I bet they. I, I bet they I bet the same check. The Equal pay. Equal pay. All right. Although I, look, it was Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Exactly. He was in the title, right? It That's wasn't true. Captain America and the Falcon. Which Never is the comic book. <laughs> Man, I would totally right? watch they, Captain they America set up, and the They Falcon. set up the Falcon as the new best friend, and then Bucky had to come back and share that back seat with him. What? They hate each other. <laughs> this is gonna be great. What, what, if, what if they're rivals? What if they're rivals and they ha- they're fighting for Captain America's love? Who knows if Captain America's gonna be? He's gonna live in the picture. You can't kill Captain America. Maybe they're maybe they maybe they maybe the show is actually who's gonna be America's next top Captain, Captain, America. Captain America. That's right. So yeah. much. They both have they're fighting in the to comics. take over they in the both, comics. Yeah. They both have worn the, the mantle of Captain America, and that could be something a path yeah. to take. Absolutely. This the path so for the shield. This is so much money. I'm not done. But I'm wait, there's done. more? There's a Hawkeye show. Hold on. Is it Hawkeye or Jeremy is it Ninja? Renner? It's it's not Ronin. Ronin. It's Hawkeye. And mm-hmm. y- uh, teaching a young uh, Hawkeye from the comics, Lady um, Hawkeye. Uh, That's good. Uh, is it Gwen? Kate Bishop. Oh, Kate is Bishop. his apprentice okay. in the comics, Bishop, and it will be a Hawkeye and, and Kate Bishop <laughs> story, um, presumably following Endgame. Wow! So you already have those. Am I missing one? Where's Paul Rudd in all this? No, Paul Rudd is a movie. No only. TV shows? No. He's only doing yeah. movies? He's he got a backstage movies. tour of Galaxy's Edge. Wow. Uh, and in the Marvel and the MCU, they're also doing this thing that I think is super cool for fans, an animated series called What If. And if you read the comic books. <sighs> I love What Ifs. On, uh, in Marvel, they were occasionally release uh, these one shots um, called What Ifs. Yeah. And it, it, these were uh, one sense premises that allowed comic book writers and uh, artists to go outside of the canonical story. And it would posit, you know, what if... Hulk had explosive diarrhea. What if Hulk missed the date? What if Bruce Banner wasn't the person to enter the gamma ray chamber? Oh. You know, and, and, and someone else walked in that you know. And it was General Thunderbolt Ross who became the Hulk. Uh, the what ifs that they've zombies. announced... Zombies. They did a zombies one that was a what ifs, right? Is that where that came uh, from? Marvel Zombies, I think it was own own thing. Okay. But it was, it was a thing. And DC has Elseworlds, which is... Their version of it. So, what are you uh, going to do? Like Amazing Stories kind of anthology things? It's, but it's animated, so not live action. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, what if Peggy Carter was the one who took the serum uh-huh. and oh. she becomes Captain America? Yeah. Wow. All right. That sounds Fans good. Fans want to see that? And then, what if Steve Rogers uh, wore an Iron Man suit? That kind of thing. In yeah. addition to being Captain America? I don't know. So, you really think that wow. they're going to do these, like, seriously for the insiders, nerd core kind of what ifs? Or are they going to do things that actually appeal to everybody? I think it'll appeal to everyone. I think they're going to okay. take existing characters and... Could they do, like, what if Star Wars and Marvel were in the same universe? No. They could? No. Yeah, they could. You could say that. I what if, what if Star-Lord killed Han Solo? Think about it. <laughs> what if? So they would have the live-action actors, the main actors, reprise their roles and just, you know, spend a day in a... In a doing some voiceover. Doing some voiceover. Locked in contractually, so Dude. they have no choice but to say exactly. yes. Star Wars-Marvel crossover would be very popular. 
But I'm sure they've done that in the comic books. It's a fun anthology idea. Yeah, I like anthologies. I like good ideas. I like what ifs. Okay. What yeah. if what if Groot could say a fourth word? All right. Yep. See, that's a really good one. Yeah. Think about that. They're doing a Monsters Inc. thing too. Right? What if Rocket Raccoon was a possum? No, I'm, we're moving on. Okay. So. Uh, Kevin Feige has said that unlike Fine, the I know past what you. Marvel TV shows, so Marvel, while the name is on like the Netflix shows, those were never part of the MCU. They were only very loosely tied. What? Really? Yeah. I feel like, like I've been really lied to. No, but they no, mentioned yeah. they reference it. Like they, they talk. They, they about reference it. an event, but they yeah. never say you know the, yeah, the alien invasion. They've mentioned a, they don't ever even say battle. They talk York. about Midtown being jacked up, kinda. Uh, and then uh, the uh, uh, Agents of Shield, which is technically the MCU, has had a more direct crossover, especially with the last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's kind of been its own thing and never really done a full crossover. Uh, Kevin Feige says the TV stuff is definitely going to be part of the MCU now. Coulson was in both of those, right? Yes, Coulson was the lead in one. But they, so, like, plot-wise, like the things that would happen, they would, they would never really happen. They weren't driving the phases forward. Like, you would never have any of the those actors from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. other than Agent Coulson in the movies. Colby Smulders never showed up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I don't know if she did. Sure. There's so much original content coming to this, what? this show. And, and that's what's interesting about it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but compared to HBO and Netflix and Amazon, they don't have a library of content. They don't have an archive of it's classic Disney, movies. Disney, of course they, they do. They have their own archive, but it's but, not like this uh, no, generous oh, no, no, yeah. no, they pool. Did, they, did. they don't have a stars deal. Right. Bob Iger said they will be licensing other stuff as well. Oh. Hmm. They will. Okay. Yeah. So, and the way that works is like HBO pays studios yeah. for movies to be on their service yeah. for a limited time. So it's not an unending library. It is all uh, windowed. Intangible. And so studios, other studios that may not have their own streaming service, Universal, uh, Paramount, uh, probably more than happy to get big paychecks to be on HBO or Comcast Xfinity or Disney+. Plus. It just seems like there's so much did, good original content coming. Did, did uh, Bob Iger kind of – because now with Disney buying Fox, they own a boatload of Hulu too. So that means they have like – Big giant streaming service that has a bunch of varied content, and then they also have their own like Disney specific yeah. streaming service. Did, did you talk about how that stuff is going to work, or if did they address that at all? They said there'd probably be a bundle with Hulu, ESPN, and Disney. I don't want ESPN. What if I just want Hulu and Disney? And then you're not sure. Hmm. I don't like hockey. Uh, Sorry, hockey fans. <laughs> yeah, I want to break down all the playoffs so far. Will. I'm not gonna ask you to. Uh, can can we like puck, pucks happen? I've I've mentioned that it's gonna be a Monsters Inc. show. Yes, yes. I know. Are we past Marvel? I'm excited for this. Yep. I'm not sure that's the Pixar film I would choose to have a spinoff from. I think Toy Story is the more obvious. But you can't show. get those. Uh, yeah, they can't get. I mean, it's a lot of voices. John Goodman and hold on, who's uh, Monsters Inc. Is, is Billy Crystal and John Goodman, right? Yeah, yeah. but I, I don't know if they're cast or not. But it, I would hope so. Mm. But also, Monsters Inc. There's a whole expanded world of those yeah. monsters. Mm-hmm. Doesn't need to be. I love Monsters Inc. Too. It's just a lot of other movies. Yeah, um, uh, so they're doing Pixar shorts. Some original shorts. Will they be there now? And we saw well, some ha- of this these experimental shorts. Exactly. They have this whole new series of shorts that they've developed inside, where they've kind of let their animators go a little outside the restrictions they would normally have for their pre-movie shorts. Mm -hmm. They are much more like independent films. So they'll have all of those on the network as well. I want, um, I want a Frozone show. Sure. Frozone. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sam Jackson's part of the family. I know he's, he's in all, all the franchises. That's right. Yeah. He's the one, he's the one that you will unite them all. He's the one true. Maybe I can't remember what his character was in the prequels. Mace Windu. Mace Windu. Maybe Mace Windu is is just uh, uh, Nick Fury. What if he has like through a wormhole? One day he's booked for all three of those, and he like runs on the set in Star Wars, but the eye patch is still on. They've got to take it off, and yeah, and then and he's the gnarly cat eye. Bring the lightsaber, and then mm-hmm. you know, and then he does the Frozone stuff. Yeah. yeah. What if? What if? What if? What if? Um, do you think when they do the Simpsons on Disney Plus, they're gonna fix the framing bullshit that FX did when they put all the Simpsons on FX and made them HD? No. You what, know what they did? What they do? They matted the top and the bottom out of all the frames. So they wanted to make they a letterbox and they zoomed in ah, instead yeah. of just leaving black bars on the side for all the old non non widescreen leave, ones. Leave the black bars. Please leave the back ball, black bars. Yeah. Artist Please. intent. Come on. I don't care about artist intent. Just make it look the way it looked when I was a kid. <laughs> That's why you need your AKTV. Uh, uh, on other streaming stuff. Hey, have you guys seen uh, the You vs. Wild thing on Netflix? No. This is Bear Grylls' new show. It uses Netflix's 
Bandersnatch style choose your own adventuring, <sighs> but for a survival show. Hold on. So you can say, do you want him to eat the poop or do you want him to not eat the poop? There you go. What? I don't know if that is an exact choice. Poop joke number two, ladies and gentlemen. But I think it's, it's the third one, actually. <laughs> number three. You made the third one Thank with you. that with that reference. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I haven't actually done this, but Netflix seems all in, and they seems to be they seem to be uh, embracing the FMB gaming aspect of it. It really is just playing an FMB game, a CD-ROM video adventure. I, so I played the Minecraft one of those with my daughter one day, and yeah. I did it when I was like I was sick, and I wanted to just be left alone for a little bit, and was like, "Hey, let the TV raise my child for a little while." Uh-huh. But they didn't voice the choices. Yeah. So I still had to read all the choices to her, which completely defeated the purpose you of the just, whole thing. Just make it up. I, just keep your eyes closed. I just made it worse. <laughs> I just made or it just worse. Tell the choose left or right. I mean, yeah, but it, it doesn't work that way because if you choose the wrong one, then they kill the pig. Oh, God. Yeah, it's really dark. Spoilers. Um. So have you watched it? Yeah. Was it cool? I haven't watched it. I've only yeah. read about it. F&B. Good, good story. Okay. Yeah. Cool story, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's. I mean, the point is that they are heavily invested in this yeah i guess so so do you think that's why they killed airplay for netflix is because they want netflix to only be on platforms that support this stuff no i think it's because apple is going to push out their own stream service I think oh, okay it's, a, it's, a petty it's just a it's just bickering between i don't know. faces of multinational corporations it's flexing their muscles they could do it i mean they look i i think netflix is the one who has the most to lose from all of these in, the increasing number of streaming services out there because like with Hulu and Amazon Prime, which comes free with my Amazon two day delivery, stuff. they're also starting from the highest point. Well, right? that's what I'm saying. So yeah, yeah they're, they're they're the incumbent now. Yeah. They're the Comcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other streaming. Oh, just TV news. Um, something I was very excited for on FX, which was uh, Why the Last Man. Being I developed. love those comics. Uh, no longer being developed. No. The FX passed on the series. Oh. Uh, so and I think they saw the rights, so it might get revived. But they had cast people, and they and and uh, they had showrunners, and they were. I guess they might have even shot a pilot. But kind of like the preacher, if it was shot as written, it would be hard to put on basic cable. Yeah, I, I think it's a perfect show for basic cable. It doesn't need so? to be Game of Thrones. It doesn't need There's to be HBO. A lot of boobs in the comic it doesn't, book. Doesn't you don't you can write around that? Okay, that's yeah, fair. Film around that. Yeah, yeah. You guys watch the uh, Game of Thrones? No. I did. I watched. I drove back uh, from L.A. and. Got back Sunday night, 11 p.m., unpacked, and then watched Game of Thrones at 12.30 a.m. Did you give it a thumbs up? I would. Yeah? I would. I how, mean, did, it, have they announced how many episodes? Six. And then it's done. It's done. Wow. So Everybody dies. <laughs> it's like, it's like it, it's moving fast. Like last season moved fast. Yeah. It's like they're getting to the point of things. Has hour, winter come yet? Winter is here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, winter is here. Is it one, one hour yeah. each? It is, uh, no, they're varying lengths. Um, to, if you want to know, the first episode is like an hour, seven minutes, but I think their episode's as long as an hour, 30, hour, 40. It's whatever they wanted, huh? They, they should you go. Look, people you, will watch as long as you want. Yeah. How many people are still alive? Like 30? They got to they gotta cram in a lot of murders in that in the time they have left. Uh, I don't know how, how many people are still alive. But you know how in the opening sequence, they, they have a new opening sequence. That's not, that's not, not a spoiler to say. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, in the same vein as past opening sequences where – they have like these miniature unfolding uh, cities, mm-hmm. and previously it was used to identify the parts of Westeros and even the beyond the Westeros, um, beyond the Narrow Sea. Uh, now the new opening sequence is beautiful. It only focuses on King's Landing and Winterfell, hmm. which says that that's where all the action's taking place. Is it a shorter intro then? No, it's a longer intro, huh. bigger animation. Huh. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Any, any dragons? Uh, in the episode? Yeah, no, no, no in the animation. I actually don't know. Okay. Uh, episode lengths. First episode was 54 minutes. They only go up. 54, 58, hour 22, hour 18, hour 20, hour 20. The last four episodes are movie length. All right. Almost 90 minutes long, if you include those HBO previews. Will's lost interest. Will, <laughs> Will's <laughs> Nope. <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Nope. Will clearly... Does not know that for this podcast, you hold it. You hold it, Will. There is no leaving. You should have brought him one of your wet naps from your car. <laughs> That's right. Uh, P mats. Sorry. Ripley needed it. Uh, okay. Um, and then last bit of pop culture news, tying in technology. Uh, YouTube TV raised its prices. There was an introductory price of 35 bucks, uh, but now everyone's getting bumped up to 50 bucks. Must have been a but, success. But you get... Um, uh, 
uh, more channels. They're putting all the, the Scripps Network stuff on there, Discovery. There you go. Um, and HGTV, which a lot of people would want it. So uh, I still love the service, and I'm gonna. It's, it's still my preferred way to cut, cut cords. Um, before we move on to our next segment, I want to thank the other sponsor that makes this episode possible, and that's Hrefs. Hrefs is a digital subscription-based software for search engine optimization. If you want to grow traffic on your website, outrank your competitors on Google, and get tons of inbound leads, Hrefs is the tool you need. Hrefs is an all-in-one SEO tool set. It does absolutely everything from content research and keyword analysis to technical site audits, rank tracking and backlinks analysis essentially gives you all the insights you need to research and monitor your niche, then rank your website on the top of search engines. Ahrefs also just launched the beta for its new Keywords Explorer, rebuilding the whole tool with new technology and adding nine additional sources of data. You can now do keyword research for YouTube, Amazon, Bing, Yahoo, etc. It's for people who want to micromanage their search and op- engine optimization and want all the data to make their best decisions. Ahrefs has a seven-day trial for only $7. Sign up today at ahrefs.com. That's spelled A-H-R-E-F-S.com. Again, that's A-H-R-E-F-S.com. <laughs> Perfect timing for Will Smith to come back. Mm-hmm. Well, hello. From his his short break, twenty three second break there. Will it's the average time it takes a mammal to drain its bladder. I, I I've heard that before. It's just good science. Once once or twice. You know, on on this podcast, you hold it. Look, I have a medical condition, and I'm not allowed to hold it right now. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Um, you know what's also not being held no longer <laughs> a grudge. Wow. Grudges. Oh yes, grudges. <laughs> Grudge is between Qualcomm and Apple because they are settling mm-hmm. Qualcomm, yeah. uh, which had previously sued Apple for um, its violation of its patent use, um, is getting some money Why? from Apple. What was the violation that they accused them of? Uh, it was... Do you know? Because it, this, it was be- about the, the... this was about the radio stuff. Yes, exactly. What about the radio stuff? They Qualcomm said that Apple with their uh, A10 SoC, maybe A9 SoC. Yeah had violated Qualcomm patents on 4G LTE radios, and apparently they just settled. Well, also, this is the Qualcomm had, or Apple did not want to pay Qualcomm for the That's pricing, it. Yeah. and so it uses strength as the biggest phone maker in the world and to try to black, blacklist Qualcomm. I didn't realize that Apple was making their own radios. Yeah, the, well, the SOC has the radio stuff inside it. Okay, interesting. All right, and and Qualcomm said that they, Apple was withholding payments, and and so the licensing. And Apple was saying that Qualcomm was price fixing, so there were countersuits and the whole thing. It's Ugh. the same way this shit always works. Yeah, there's a bunch of lawyers. They get expert witnesses. They decide how much the economic impact is, and then they settle for cross licensing plus X million dollars in favor of whoever loses. There you go. So uh, someone paid. Apple paid the n- undisclosed amount. Uh, Did all they litigation. Paid with Apple pay? <laughs> Got out that no number card, just bam, yeah, here you go. Tap. Wow, that's a lot of zeros in there. I'm not paying transaction fees on this. Yeah. <laughs> Get that nice 3% boost if you did that's it. That's right. That's a lot of iPhones. In an Apple that, store. Uh, that could, they could have bought back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a new licensing agreement. So Apple probably wants this for uh, for some Five, five 5G? G. 5G. Does this matter for 5G? I don't know if it does. Um, probably a different, different set of IP for 5G. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but it's a six-year licensing agreement. Um, and a multi-year chipset supply agreement. So expect to see Qualcomm radios back in uh, iPhones in addition to Intel. All right. Do Friends. you think? Or do you think that they're just not going to do Qualcomm radios at it all depends anymore? How, depends what's the what's better technology for the consumer. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, on to headphones. Some Microsoft news, actually, or Microsoft rumors. Uh, there's a rumor that, like Amazon, Microsoft will also be moving on to, into the wireless earbud game with... Uh, their own take on uh, AirPods, uh, Surface Buds, as we're calling them now, um, which is a smart move. Oh, man, I thought this was about being friends with other people who had Surfaces. No. You do that anyway. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You, you squirt some songs between your Zunes. Yeah, man, I yeah. love squirting songs. It's yeah. great. Uh, the AirPods, undeniable success. You know, we talked last week about how the youths use AirPods, and I got some confirmation. How did um, the youth use the AirPods? Well, I posited the case that uh, AirPods, 
even though it's a two-year-old product, has mm-hmm. reached new levels of popularity, not because it's a good product, uh, <laughs> because the pairing is good, auto quality, maybe not so much, but because it's finally established uh, itself in youth's culture as a status symbol, because it's expensive, because it's $170, mm. because it's $200 now for the next generation one. He's saying people walk around with the earbuds in to show it off. To show that it mm. is a piece of jewelry. And uh, Apple Store employee, listener of the podcast, mm-hmm. messaged me and confirmed that to be the case. Both adults and the youths go in the Apple Store, buy AirPods with little to z- no knowledge of how they work or the technical benefits, but because they want the AirPods. I think that's pretty standard, though. Like, I think people go in and buy stuff like that. All Most people don't have any idea how anything works. I don't apparently know how anything works because... <laughs> Tell I w- us what annoys you, Jeremy. I waited in line for an hour to talk to a genius just this past weekend because my stepdad's watch was not raising to wake. Uh huh. Even though the feature was turned on. Yeah. Waited for an hour. I'm an idiot. He's on freaking drama mode. Oh. He didn't have the, th- he had the theater He's mode the theater. on? He's on theater mode. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The, the genius, like, said, slide it up, hit the button. <laughs> I was so hour? disappointed in myself. Jeremy? Wow. Do you I not think- use the theater mode? I do. You've oh. gone full dad. Seriously, dude. Yeah. Congratulations. It's all over. The the problem with theater mode is that it's not smart enough to be tied into your Apple wallet, which has movie tickets and theater tickets, to know that when your screening is over, it automatically should turn off. I've had had theater mode linger for days um, for that that reason. There's no turn off when I leave this location for theater mode. Oh, yeah. That would be simple. Simple. Yep. Simple thing. You know, the easier solution is just not use an Apple Watch. Like Apple products, they'll, they'll do a thing where if you turn off uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, the default now is it only turns off until the next day. Hey, do you want to hear a fun Apple Watch factoid? Oh, I love factoids. The original launch Apple Watches just don't work anymore. Oh, I know. I know that. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't call that fun. No, no, no. I factoid. mean, like, it used to be that you still get notifications. Yeah. Now they don't even do notifications. What? Really? Yeah. They, when they changed the way notifications work with the Can last you melt iOS it for gold? update. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, if I had the gold one, I could. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can melt it for stainless steel, I o- guess. Only Beyonce. Uh, Series zero, you mean? Series zero. That's yeah. too bad. Yeah. yeah, way to retcon that name and make us all feel like <sighs> dumbasses. So Surface Pods, uh, whatever they're called, uh, Surface Buds, um, it's a smart move for Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft it's, it's a tough. It's a tough market to get into because the kids love Amazon's what doing the it. kids love. Yep. Worked really well for Google, right? Those things are awesome. Everybody uses them. I see them all the time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you have to do more. It's tough to move with just functionality. I don't think people care about the functionality. It needs to somehow be cool. And I don't know if Microsoft knows how to do that. Has Microsoft ever made anything cool? Yeah, the Xbox. Is the Xbox cool? Well, I mean, at some point it was. Yeah. I I think the Surface is cool. I think that that they may not have the prestige of a a MacBook on a college campus because of how much they cost. But I think having a, I, I like seeing services out in the wild. I think those I, people are cool. I mean, I think the service is a good product. I don't know if it's cool. The thing is, like, if you're right about these these the youth, the kids yes. using these as a status symbol, yeah. I mean, is that anything new? They've always had the white earbuds. The white earbuds were a part of their marketing campaign yeah, just, from the beginning. But the white of the earbuds iPod. did not were not a uh, a sign that said I spent two hundred dollars on this thing. No, it said I I, I spent two hundred dollars on this iPod. When they now were, they want both. When everyone has an iPhone now. When everyone has an iPhone now. Everyone has you know you yeah. Have, uh, iPhones are saturated. Yeah. And now you can't even tell the difference between the cheap iPhone and the expensive iPhone in a glance. Are there are there like hipsters? <laughs> are there hipsters bringing back old iPods now, like refurbing like a no. first gen iPod, putting no. a bigger hard drive in there? I should have fresh I should've, battery. A thousand songs in your pocket, dude. You, you could put ten thousand songs with a bigger hard drive. Bring back the Nomad jukebox. Do you think people... First MP3 player. Or not first, but... My first (laughs) popular one. You know how you can test this, Norm? Hey, Will. Hey, how's it going, Norm? Gotta stay humble. Oh, God. (laughs) You know... Okay, first off, I have to admit, I almost went back to get my AirPods today in case I had to make a phone call. Yeah. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Second, I think you can test this by saying, hey, I have a busted pair of AirPods. I'm selling them for 40 bucks on Craigslist. Mm. And see how long they last. I'm surprised there aren't uh, <clears throat> bootleg AirPods. There are bootleg AirPods. Like the, no, there are tons. Ran- oh, really? Of bootleg AirPods. Oh, I'm being fooled. Like fifteen. Those bucks. kids are much less cooler than I thought. You can they get were. bootleg AirPods for like fifteen bucks from just a uh, shell. Bang. No, no, they work. They're oh, terrible they- Bluetooth headsets, headphones. 
uh, Banggood and AliExpress and all the places that sell stuff straight from China. You can get all the the knockoff, like with the case, with the charging in the case, the whole thing. Got it. Got yeah. It. All right. Other Microsoft news, maybe cooler. Uh, Xbox and uh, E3 press conference. Uh-huh. Uh, Major Nelson, their spokesperson, has announced that they uh, will have a big presence. Um, Sunday, June 9th, is when they're going to be doing their live briefing, E3, and uh, they will have a big announcement. They're going big this year. What does that mean? A I mean, they're Xbox? the only one there going big. Yeah. Microsoft and Ubisoft. Really? Uh, Bethesda. Let's see. Activision doesn't do an E3 conference. Yeah. I think EA, EA said they're not yeah, doing one this yeah. year. Nintendo Sony's doing own. their video thing. Nintendo's doing their video thing. <clears throat> mm. It's mm. a little bit of a thin, thin for press conference. I mean, look, N- Nintendo paved the way showing that you don't have to have a big press conference to get people to care. And Reggie's gone, too. That's right. Oh, Bowser's in. Bowser's in. Wow. Bowser finally wins. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Give me some VR news, Microsoft. Have a strategy. They did say VR they would be part of it. They said VR would be part of the last console. Yeah. And then it wasn't. Yeah. You could plug a, mm. a Windows MR headset into the Xbox and then nothing happens. <laughs> That's a strategy. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, um, either of you on your MacBooks or in your iOS life use a Luna display? Is that the thing that lets you turn your iPad into a second display for your yes. Mac? Yeah. No. I did oh. once. It was bad. Um, over a wired connection. Even. Oh, I didn't do it over wired. Yeah. It was over probably 802.11n when we tested it. It's useful. Nine years it's useful ago. in traveling, and okay. uh, it's a good it's a good application. Astro HQ makes it. Uh, the rumor is Apple is going to probably make that irrelevant with their own version of that called sidecarring um, for Mac OS 10 uh, 1. 5. I don't believe that they would do something like that. Why not? Because it seems like it would always be a little bit janky, in a way that Apple tries not to make their core product. Well, they don't have a touchscreen Mac yet. And they've always uh, been averse to that. So that they, you would want to touch that iPad screen, wouldn't you? Uh, maybe th- for Apple's version, you would not have touchscreen functionality. Yeah. While in mm. the other versions, uh, on this other apps, you touch, touch gives you some type of input. Mm-hmm. God, if you could use that and then use it with drawing apps, like you use a Cintiq or something with an iPad Pro, that would be amazing. It would be, but why not, not holding my breath? Run, run the other way around, have a native app on your iPad, run the, your Cintiq stuff, and then... Well, sometimes pipe, you like to pipe that, sync that data back to the PC. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, either one's fine, I guess. Whatever. Um, oh, my God. I, my show notes disappeared. The Tesla $35,000 Model 3 is oh, dead. Oh, nope. yes. Nope, it's back. Wait, what? Back? Yeah. what? Yeah. Are you, you kidding get, me? Nope. You can, call, you can get it, but you mm. have to call. I mean, that, that was always the case. It was, it yeah. was gone in, in their dealerships, and dealerships were almost nearly gone. But in, in efforts to, uh, uh, as they say, streamline the product lineup, yep. based on... Their data on how many people people were buying, they said people weren't really buying the thirty-five thousand dollars car. They were buying the plus version. It's only a couple thousand dollars more, and you got more range. So the baseline will be the standard or uh, the plus version, which will be like a software limited. Uh, limited version of the plus or the standard range. What's a software limited version mean? So as opposed to having uh, manufacturing battery packs with different capacities. Oh, and we'll have one on the okay. high end and then okay. we'll have one on the low end and the base level will be a software limited version of so the high of, end. on the low end. So if you ever okay. need an additional 30 miles, you just call up and unlock that feature for an additional five grand. Or really? It is. Yeah. Wow. It, it's a software unlock. Yeah. To turn yours from a, a basic wow. to a plus or so, standard. Like I'm wondering at any point in time, will somebody need that range in order to get home? Well, remember when they had the... And like call up and unlock it. When they had the hurricane, they unlocked everybody's ranges on the Model S's. There you go. So that people could get out of Florida or wherever it was. OnStar. Call OnStar. Yeah. <laughs> Help me with my Tesla. Wow. Unlock some mileage. How do you feel about that software locked battery? Look, it's also everything. The world is software now. I feel you, man. I get it. But it also feels like if you know you have something in, that is a part of your property, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, let's, people let's, feel like they own their cars. Let's think about this. From a pure technology standard standpoint. Is a software lock where those cells aren't even being filled? Is it like a, a discrete number of cells that yeah. do not get any electrons, or is it software managed where uh, you get a balanced battery, a better, even I'm maybe sure even a better balance balance battery, battery, battery yeah. because you're filling all the cells yeah. and you're only getting access? Because then you're then that that is potential energy. 
It literally the, the the battery is turning the car is just turning the, the the software is turning the car off when the battery should be out based on the battery you bought. Right. Which means you're actually you're always going to be topping it off just that little bit and, and cycling those those electrons. It just feels weird to me. Sure. I mean, look, the whole yeah. fucking future should feel weird. We we're in late stage capitalism dystopia. That's what this is what we're here for. Uh, now that autopilot, the baseline autopilot that I talked about is now standard. It's like if oh. Apple selled, so, selled, selled. It's like if Apple sold a, a single phone. What are you selling? But they Jeremy? unlocked various amounts of memory capacity <laughs> based on how much you, you spent. Hey, I got bad news for you. What? It's probably going to be a time in the not too distant future when it's cheaper to do that. Yeah. Just put 512 gigs on every iPhone sold and only lock the certain portion. It's what happens with CPUs. It's what it's happened with CPUs for years. You know, you buy a, a six core Intel CPU. It's really an eight core die. With two cores that didn't pass QC, but they do QC. Like you know that there's like you can't pay to unlock those cores. I mean, what? That would be the difference. So, so say Intel is in a situation where, say Nvidia. Well, Nvidia is a bad example. Say Intel's in a situation where they have a whole bunch of eight core CPUs and nobody wants to buy eight core CPUs. Yeah. What if they sell those as four as four core CPUs and then say, hey, for two hundred bucks, you can unlock the other four cores? Wouldn't that it's make the same you, thing? Wouldn't that make you feel weird? I don't know. I bought it. I bought. I paid the four core price. I mean, it certainly makes my hacker brain start to tingle. You know, like could you unlock those yourself? Yeah. What's the What's the jailbreak? For do you know Tesla? a guy? You know who could do that I for bet. you? I know a guy. You know. I also think that people think mission. of those cars as different. Like people, when making a purchase, the cars are a car purchase, even though it is a more of a piece of technology now than it is a quote unquote car. Certainly, your uh, car. People think of it in a different mindset than they do. A piece of consumer tech or a laptop, a, a computer. It's you know, and we talked about this before. Like, it, there's lots of software that you can download as a free demo, and then you can pay the key, the code, and it maybe gets rid of ads or it unlocks more content. For whatever reason, given that it's completely digital, I don't have as much problem with that. But if I have atoms, if I have purchased something, it is mine in my space. I feel like I should be able to put that to use. So, Norm, can I ask a dumb question? Sure. What's the difference between the long range and the performance? model for the model three is it just software it is uh the, the performance has to be the dual motor well these are both dual motor according to the picture that i'm clicking on uh right that's right because the long range is only dual motor now yeah yeah which is sorry um did you get a single motor long range yeah which is the, the one they get because yeah, dual yeah. motor is not less worth, weight right less well the, the benefits of the dual motor which is increased zero to 60 or faster zero to 60 um probably better traction a little bit better traction but like not worth the what a four thousand dollars, whatever it was. Is it only front wheel drive or rear wheel drive for the for the one motor one? I believe it is rear view, uh, rear, rear rear wheel, wheel drive. Okay, um, but performance is, is software. Okay, that's that's see same thing. You you know are you going to pay an extra? So it's an extra twenty grand to go from the basic twenty eight thousand dollar frame to the performance one, which is the longer, bigger battery. Yeah. And higher top speed. And not to mention the autopilot stuff. Like, it has all the well, hardware. The, the autopilot stuff's not built in. I mean, you have to pay for it. That is also a software update. All, all cars ship with the necessary hardware, and you just have to pay to get the un okay, unlock. Okay, fair. So then the full self-driving cap capability now to unlock that, to get the self-parking and the auto lane change and stuff, you have to pay for the $5,000 option up front. It says autopilot included enables your car to steer, accelerate, and brake automatically for other vehicles and pedestrians within its lane. Then it says full self-driving capability. To unlock that, you have to pay the five thousand dollars or seven, or seven grand after delivery. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's bonkers. And and they've said that that price will only go up. I do like the idea of being able to summon the car. Do you ever do that? No. It, it, it seems like it'd be really scary. It's it's slow. It works if you're parked in a really tight spot. Okay. But then you have other things potentially worry about, like other cars. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, my show notes are back. So two 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 two. Uh, quick product announcement. Uh, you guys still use a? Uh, um, you yeah. guys use uh, harmonies, uh, harmonies or universal remotes? No. I still have one. Do you ever wish yours had Alexa built in? So it's funny. I've gone from using the physical remote to mostly just using it on my phone. Oh wow! Um, That's a place where I, I don't like using the remote on my phone. I, I just do it because it's convenient. Like it's for the bedroom TV is where the harmony is. Mm. In the living room, we still mostly just use the Apple uh, the Apple remote. Yeah, Universal Remotes used to be this big business before touchscreen phones where to get one with a touchscreen was really expensive. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's still 
lot of because there's a lot of complexity in your home entertainment setup. Uh, and so these premium devices to tie in and with built-in apps on HDTVs, it beca- it's a little bit less of a necessity because you don't have a ton of devices typically. Now, well, there are situations where you may have a Roku and Apple TV and a game console, PlayStation, yeah. PlayStation and even um, a yeah, soundbar. Uh, and so you may need one of these. And Logitech has a new Harmony Express uh, that has no screen, mm-hmm. but it's all connected via Alexa. So, so, I mean, the interesting thing to me is that this category with HDMI CEC and the built-in apps on the TVs, it's much less, like it doesn't seem like it needs to exist anymore. Right, because you, you turn on the PlayStation by pressing the button on the PlayStation controller, and it switches to the PlayStation. You turn on the Apple TV, it switches to the Apple TV. You press the the remote button for Netflix on your remote, and it goes to Netflix on your TV. How, I, I'm interested in Alexa, but I can already do that with a lot of stuff. My like my existing Harmony Hub talks to Alexa. My Xbox talks to Alexa. My TV talks to Alexa. I see the scenario in which any type of universal remote is useful is when you have other people over, when family's visiting, and they have no idea how to access and run your thing. I mean, you just tell them to not use the TV. I have never had a, a, a universal remote that actually worked consistently. Oh God, the, the Harmony stuff used to be great, but it was just really expensive. Like the number of times I've had to walk a babysitter or my parents when they visit through how to, and then it doesn't do what it's supposed to do because they hit the wrong button. It's a mess. You hit the wrong button once. And yeah. If, if you want to try to troubleshoot that with voice, that just seems like a dark pit. It, it's, it's like most things with a voice. The potential is high, but there's also a lot of room for failure. And the smallest mistake means you're just gonna, yeah, you're frustra- you're frustrating yourself. Now you told, and like you're right. I think it's, it's really interesting promise. You told me that you don't just have to say like you know turn on the TV. You can also say put on Grey's Anatomy, and, and it they will have a data- database of and shows. That's neat. W- which will launch you know the your Comcast box and right. then switch to the channel that has the show on, which I think is useful for people who have like parents. Who are visiting and don't want to, or friends who are visiting and don't want to, you know, yeah, tamper with all your different remotes. But Siri now does that too. I mean, it yeah. has for some time. If you yeah. hold down the mic button, talk to the remote, mm-hmm. they, if it's digital, and then, if it's in, within the Apple TV, exactly, yeah, then it can find it. Yeah. But that also applies to any other app that is blessed by its service that's on the Apple TV. Yeah, yeah. So really, it, it's about changing. It's about the changing state of how people are using or getting their entertainment, like. The days of a Comcast box, a Roku, an Xbox, the TV over the air, that's that's going away. It's increasingly people, just Apple TV in my house. Just Apple TV or just one device, whether yeah. that's your game console or for some people or the native apps on your TV. And so the one remote is just fine. Now, the Apple TV remote still sucks. God. Have you used the new software one on iOS? Oh, with a uh, iOS twelve. I oh mean, god, the, the it's update, so good. Whatever it is, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, like when you when you pull it down from the control center and you turn your phone off or your phone goes to sleep. Now, next time you turn your phone on, it's just back on the remote. And also, the little context widget that usually has like what music is currently playing knows that it's that my TV is on and it has like a baseball game on and it gives me all the Apple TV context stuff plus a shortcut to the remote there. So you it's like very it. good. Okay, it's very it's it is a massive massive improvement in Great. usability on that. And it's a big touchpad too. Yeah, I mean, in reality, the only the only person who uses the Apple TV remote in my house is the kid, because she doesn't have a phone. Mm. Mm. She needs to get a job. Yeah, exactly. That's why I tell her all the time. She's six. She, what does she expect me to carry her dead weight for another twelve years, thirteen years? All right. How about some VR? Sure. How much is that Harmony Express remote, by the way, Norm? Two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, I think a little pricey. Too. Oh, good luck with that. Yeah, but you can talk to it. I don't care. It can talk to you. That's even worse. <laughs> you guys remember the the game Another World? Yes. Maybe you don't because you didn't live in the UK. It was called Out of This World I, here. They re-released it on Switch a couple of years ago. Yeah. It's very good. The it's remake the, was the, excellent. Uh, it's like Prince of Persia style animation. It's a French guy. You mean like rotoscoped? Yeah, rotoscoped. Yeah. Yeah. It's super timeless game it still plays extremely well and like you said they they redid it um and he actually did a great post-mortem at uh gdc a few years ago uh anyway he's making a new game and it's it's intriguing it's it doesn't have anywhere near the same kind of look as out of this world or another world it has but it does have a very unique distinct look that uh sprung out of his experimentations with the unity engine 
and doing some procedurally generated uh, animations mm. of beasts and weather patterns and rock formations. And it looks quite cool. I can't wait to see. It's called Paper Beasts? Paper Beasts. Yeah, I can't wait to see how this turns out. And it, I guess there will be VR support. I thought it looked lovely. Yeah. I'm, I'm down to support this guy. I'm just glad to see he's still doing it. It's been a long time since Another World came out. 30 years almost, right? Yeah. I remember reading a Nintendo Power. Yeah, me too. That had um, a full page, like, stitch screenshot of the first level of yeah. Out of This World. Of Out of This World? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It was the only way you could figure out how to beat it. It was really hard. Oh, I, I you could beat it. Have you played it lately? Yeah. I'd like to see you beat it right now. No, no, no. It definitely holds up. Okay. Yeah, I I've, have probably played it the past couple of years. Go left. That's the big tip on Out of This World. You go right, dude. You start by going left. No, you don't want to go left immediately. You want to go to the right and then get chased by the beast. Yeah, fair, 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 fair. Oh. <laughs> the VR Minute. Virtual reality this week. Oh, boy. All right, where do we start? Um, how about... Let's talk about... Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, ah, really oh. owning it, Chan. This is <laughs> I know. There's, well, let's talk about some rumors. Okay. Well, why? What rumor? Well, the, there's... The, what do you got? We're waiting for the quest. We're waiting yeah. for Oculus there's, Quest. There's going to be a pink version you can buy? No. What? We've, we've speculated gonna... in the past. Uh, well, obviously, launch date, still unknown. We don't know when it's going to come out. But uh, all signs are now pointing toward F8. Like what's F8? That's Facebook's conference. Oh, okay. You know, from GDC, we're asking about release timing, and there's like plenty more events this year. Yep. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense to me that come end of this month, April 30th, is when F8 begins. There were some Best Buy employees who posted to Reddit and yeah. said that they had received bundles like already. Now that like seems units? highly suspect because that's really oh. early. It was like three weeks out from the time of, of the posting, and they said that they were dated. How the, how is then the that month. information not then leaked already? Like, and there's no the photograph. Photos. That's proof? the thing. The photos. Yeah. Why are there no photos? Yeah. No. I, so I'm I'm definitely suspicious, but it does line up with that event. Now, would that be if if at F8 details are announced, would that be like a day and date thing? Is that like is that a good strategy? Let's assume that's the strategy. Mark Zuckerberg yeah. goes up on stage, like says, available now kind of thing. Right. Right. That like, seems crazy. I always West. assumed it would be an announcement of a date. So you think that April 30th, if, if that is a, something's going to happen at F8, it would be an announcement of a release date, a pre-order. It would be pre-orders now, comes out in two weeks. Uh, maybe that's just me tempering my excitement and hope. But yeah, uh, yeah that's what I'm assuming. Yeah. If it is a day and date thing, which would be in line with this Best Buy rumor, yeah, fantastic. Do you think that would be fantastic? Can they make enough of them to satisfy that's the demand? Thing. That's a cr- that's, unless that's their strategy to go you know, have it all sold out and, and make it. Not a bad headline. Just make sure that, that you have enough. You have enough supply. Yeah. Like I, when I bought the Go on release day, they they only had two boxes of them, and they yeah. were sold out within thirty minutes of opening the store. Right. Right. I think for the Go, they probably met demand supply was equally met at, at launch. I think demand is going to be much higher. Not at my Quest. store. I I mean, I ho- hopefully they get new units out there quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, will you get a Quest if it comes out in the next couple of weeks? Will you get one with the secret message? Right. That was the other news this What's week. What's the secret message? Well, Nate Mitchell over at Oculus said that for a bunch of shipping units of the new touch controllers, because mm-hmm. the Rift S and the Quest will have the same controllers, uh, new, new tracking ring that goes the other direction. Um, so on the inside, there is a piece, uh, a, a piece of hardware, like some part of the assembly. It looks like a flex PCB. That has a embedded message that was only supposed to be for Prototype units. No, well, sil- silk screen message on it. So they're selling prototypes as hard as real no, hardware. No, 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 no it just got it got put into oh, the production pipe. Forgot to remove it. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. And the messages like uh, the Masons were here. Yeah. Hi, I fix it, and uh, Big Brother is watching. Well, that one was only in dev kits, so that's definitely not going to oh, be released. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm. I'm, I'm Whatever. This is much ado about nothing. Yeah. That it, seems like an yeah. oopsie. Yeah. It, it sounds like they had there. they had to get ahead of uh, making that uh, announcement. Um, a little bit of Maricopa before it became a bigger story than it than it is. Yeah. Uh, the other uh, rumor, and we've spe- something we speculated on, is the other SKU for the Oculus Quest. It's going to launch, we know, with sixty four gigs. Mm-hmm. And well, um, t- today it accidentally launched on Facebook. Uh, pre orders or some kind of orders launched on Facebook UK. 
And sorry, oh, not Facebook. Amazon. Amazon, 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 UK. Amazon UK. The UK. Yeah. And so people were able to see that there is, in fact, a 128 gigabyte SKU and mm-hmm. that it costs 499 Oculus said that it launched accidentally. Amazon pushed it. They shouldn't have. It's now gone. But hmm. Oculus confirmed 499 price point for the 128 gigabyte Quest. All right. What the what? God, that would be the one to get. You think? For me. 100 bucks for 64 gigabytes. That's what I assumed it would be the case. I mm. think I I was thinking it would be less. Personally. You thought it would be 50 bucks. Yeah. But that is a way for them I they've got to have slim margins on the Quest. This is a way for them to make some of that up. I get it. Mhm. Mhm. And uh with with no micro SD card even though there's USB-C, I think you want as much storage. I think if you want to be plugging in your computer. Games are going to be a lot bigger than Go. Yeah. Ma- data management less on, on these devices. And I've already put uh, expended the limit on the Go. Yeah. So, yeah. How big was the Go? 64 gigs? 64 was the second tier. It's 32, 64. Yeah. Oh, I think I bought the 32 one. Never had a, had a problem. That was the $200 one. Yeah. You don't play a lot of games on the Go. I don't play a lot of games on the Go, it turns mm-hmm. out. I have, I basically play Keep Talking Nobody Explodes and watch Netflix. Um, Software-wise, that 50 title launch lineup is you know, the fuller, closer to a fuller picture. We have a Rocket NX. Dude, this is great news. I don't think enough is said about this. This is a title that really stands out from all the other launch titles for maximizing 360 gameplay because mm. there's really no forward in this game, and you've always felt hampered by that cable. And being able to play wireless... Now, I know people with the Vive and the Oculus wireless headsets have been able to do this, but most people haven't dropped another $500 yeah, yeah. to get that capability. So now on the Quest, it's going to ship and it's going to be um, compatible multiplayer with people on the Rift ecosystem. So oh. there'll be a you know a nice number of people playing the game. That's awesome. And it's going to play. I can't wait. They say that graphically, it's indistinguishable from the Rift. They had to do a lot of optimizations. You can only imagine. They spent the time to do it. And I'm excited for this game. Uh, and then also, probably launching on the Quest will be uh, Vader Immortal. Which is the Oculus Studios Star Wars ILM, ILM X Lab um, narrative adventure exclusive to Quest and Rift? We saw a trailer from Star Wars Celebration. It's going to be episodic. They say it'll be about 45 minutes of content. I don't know if that's per episode or total across the uh, the, the the later episodes. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like um, from a report on Road to VR that the first episode will focus on lightsaber combat as a main gameplay gameplay element. And the second one will be uh, Force Powers. The third one's all parliamentary politics. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't dig the trailer for this game either. Uh, really? Yeah, I don't know. It's just a typical like person who finds himself in a Star Wars universe and uses a yeah. lightsaber and looks just kind of silly. Jeremy it. hates Star Wars. I think I might hate Star Wars now. Um, one of the things that's been interesting in the last week or so is a bunch of people who are making Quest apps have been posting their... Hey, here's how we ported our, you know, x86 slash desktop GPU game to work on Quest. Yeah, and there's a lot of really interesting blog posts and videos out there about that. If you kind of dig a little bit into, uh, I've seen it mostly on like VR Twitter. I'm pleasantly surprised so far with the promise of all the apps that are coming to Quest. I mean, the people who are making these games have been working on it for a long time, and and um, I, I'm knowing what I know about the the different stuff. I'm optimistic. Knowing what I know about different stuff. No, no, no. I mean, knowing what I know about porting stuff from desktop to ARM, it's yes. like it's it's hard, but it's not imp- impossible. No doubt. Especially if you're not doing something like building a game with a ton of dynamic lights or something like that. Yep. Yeah. And I think that does it for uh, VR news. Um, oh, one last rumor: Engadget says that Len- um, Lenovo may. You know they had the, they had their Star Wars VR or AR. Um, uh, AR. AR game, yep. which you put the, the phone in, you wear a headset, you yeah. get, have a track controller, I it's a lightsaber. Like Jedi Challenges or something? Yeah, like Jedi Challenges. I thought it was fun. It's good for the family. Uh, there, The rumor is that they may do one for Marvel as well. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So I don't know what, they, what, what, what you prop know. you would use. Captain America's shield? Yeah. Iron Man? I don't know. Right? A little, pew, a, pew. Exa- I think AR, as, as we've experienced with Dr. Gorbort's Invaders, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, AR Blaster is a lot of fun. If you do some yeah. finger magic. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, that does it for the VR Minute and most of our podcasts this week. We have one last segment. Right. Jeremy's got to get his phone, got to open his notes app. I got to bring out the list sh- of. I need to prepare. This is uh, here really old man territory here. Things that annoy me. <laughs> All right. 
All right, so you got the hoodies out there, right? Everyone's got the hoodie. Yeah, yeah sure. you, guys, you guys are wearing it's a uniform hoodies, right? for uh, I like a hoodie. Of startups you keeps, see it, keeps your head warm. You see a lot of people wearing hoodies, and, and it's all good. I wear. I have. I must own four hoodies. I saw you wearing a hoodie this morning, and you, they call it a hoodie because it's got a hood, doesn't it? And you yeah. pull it up, and it, it it's great. It does a good job. Keeps you out of the sun. Maybe it gives keeps you warm. Yeah, keeps, keeps you in there. The problem is, it's, it's turned into. This is just like the earbuds. There's a style thing happening. Some people are pulling that hood up only halfway. Have you seen this? No. Where the hood it comes up like to here, like and it half, me a word picture. Kind of half covers the ears and it goes up over the head. It's like a cowl. And it it's got this look. And what it says to you is it says, "I uh, I'm casual. Like I didn't I did I don't." Like I'm t- I didn't get it all the way up there. I kind of just like it just kind of went up and it kind of laid there and accidentally it's ah. halfway off. This is not accidental. This is a total style choice that people are making to pull their hoodie up only halfway. And it's it's sort of like you know like like you like the the DJ from Apple Music, the Ibn mm-hmm. Ibn I, f- I forget his name, but he he he's like the main DJ. Yeah, yeah. There. There's photos of him doing this, like in a photo shoot, so you know mm. it's intentional. This is like part of like I don't know if it's hip hop. It's like the pop collar of hoodies. It's yeah. It's like it's not because I want to cover my neck. It has nothing to do with purpose. You know, this is just style. And a hood, come on, a hood is there to be. A hood is a has a purpose, and it's but to keep you wanna, warm. You don't want to ruin the, the front off. of your hair. Yeah, the front of your head is the important part of the hair. The people I see doing this, that I, there's nothing to worry about with the front of their hair. <laughs> You say that, but it could be, like, it might look tousled. It's just, what annoys me is this sense, it's like this implication of it's just lazy or, you know, just like they're just chill. So lazy fair. But really, like, this is like they went in the mirror and this took effort. What if they have a rotator cuff injury and they can't get their arm that far forward? There's nothing lazy about this. It's... Wow, with it's with this kind of purpose. How far down your list are we these days? Are we like toward the bottom, or are we more middle or top? Hopefully, there's four more left. Oh God, you do five a week? No, no there's four more for, for up to oh, five hundred. Oh, oh. You, you guys notice this? I, I mean, do notice it. I've never I've seen, s- I've seen this in, in magazines. I've seen it on the street. I've seen people wearing hats and hoodies over their hats halfway. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's style. What's yeah. wrong with style? Maybe they want the sun off their ears, but not their forehead. Think about that. You see, I feel like style and purpose should dovetail. Style and function, I should say. Prob- probably they're wearing the hoodie up like that to keep their ear- it, it AirPods sounds like in because the they'll that, fall out otherwise. Right, it sounds like the thing that's bothering you is the attempt at looking casual, but yeah. the, the, in contrast to the mm, amount of the effort, effort that you assume they took it's sort of to like hold that position. It's sort of like messy hair that takes gel to be messy. Yeah. yeah. That, does that bother you too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I think so you this don't like, isn't like a people wear baseball caps but don't bend the cap. They like to keep the brim. I don't know, straight th- like baseball flat. baseball cap styling. Is, I don't understand it at all. Uh, I don't understand like the the hat that's like a, an inch up off the head. You know, that's like you see the high the high, the high top. Maybe you see people in Texas yeah. doing that. I don't know, but like it's just higher it's up. A Texas thing. It's not down all the way where yeah. it's like it would be contoured. Well, you ride it up above it's the ground. It's, it's casual. Odd. I don't understand. Like there's a you know you tilt it a little bit. I don't understand off that. Side, yeah. It's like it's not blocking the sun anymore. <laughs> so well. Have you ever seen a Andy Rooney before? Andy Rooney. Yeah, yeah. from sixty minutes. Uh huh. He used to do a bit like this. He did a thing. With yeah, it? he used to complain about stuff. Really? That he didn't understand. He was flummoxed by the modern world. That was kind of his whole shtick. I, I've been flummoxed by the modern world for a long time now. Yeah. I like this. This is a good look for you. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing that annoys me. That's it? All right. That yeah. does, how much, did, like, on a scale of one to ten, how much does that annoy you? Yeah, yeah every time I see it. Okay. You know. Do you want to, like, go pull that guy's hood up or down? Dude. You know, I don't want to mess with people that way because they clearly are insecure because they spend time on their image. <laughs> Wow. So I have compassion. I just don't understand it. I I'm, can't relate okay. to it. I'm glad that you're not going to invade their personal space to fix their look. Right. Exactly. That's good. Yeah. Hey, uh, last week on Projections, we uh, reviewed a uh, jo- uh, vacation simulator. Um, and uh, It's all the vacation most people can afford uh, these and, days. And, and all our opinions are there. Did um, we make a mistake? Is this a retraction? No, 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 no not a retraction. It's just okay. a, a extended. Uh, I want to point people. Uh, Road to VR has a guest post from two of the developers at Alchemy Labs. Um, who uh, worked on Vacation Sim, including the uh, painting part of Vacation There's a, a mini game where you use a paintbrush and you can draw things and you can... Uh, and apparently uh, that was a quite a bit of a technical challenge and a design challenge. And it's really cool to read their insights on 
designing a paintbrush in VR to feel like a paintbrush on actual canvas as opposed to on uh, volumetric it, space. It does do a calligraphy kind of thing. Yeah. And the the brush physics are pretty cool. Yeah. I'll hand it, I'll give it to him. Yeah. So, worth reading. Hey, can I uh can I ask a question? Sure. For the audience? Yes. Google killed Inbox a few weeks ago, Ugh. which is the mail client I used for the last 4 or 5 years it seems like. Things and that annoy me. Yeah, th- like put this at the top of your list. I I've tried three or four different things now and found nothing that is even close to being comparable and would love suggestions from the audience. Um, the ones that I've tried so far are Spark, which has too fucking many notifications, and uh, Newton, which annoyed me for reasons we don't need to go into. Now, what would it take for Gmail to work for you? Remember Inbox by Google? <laughs> that yeah, was really good. I do remember that. Yeah, but, it was great. But I feel like they're not that far off. Like the thing that I find myself doing now is <laughs> like they – I use the tabs because you have to like retain that segment. There's no choice. I yeah. hate I hate I hate it because it used to all be on one page. Yep. But at least like on the i on the phone it is like you get. If so it's you, in line on the phone. If you get, yeah, you go to primary like you you get one chance to like tap it and go through it. But there's no button at the top to archive all. That's the thing that I want. Yeah. Like the ability to say, hey, here's all the shit in the updates folder. Never show me this again. Right. Exactly. I like to enter that. I like to see if there's an important one by, you know, from and subject. And if not, archive all. Yeah. Give me that. And or even better, report spam all. Get these all. Never let me see these yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, this is a mystery to me. I'd love to know more. Like if there's anybody from Google who wants to speak anonymously about why this happened, because I know you liked Inbox because you're smart people. And you spent a lot of money buying the company that made Inbox I or know, Sparrow. Yeah. You, I know that there's people who disagree with this and I want to know what happened. I, I, well, and the other thing that annoys me about regular Gmail, there's ads. I don't see the ads. But yeah. I don't know how you don't, don't see. They're at the top I, of the my, tabs. My brain just does not You don't do tabs. I think They're at the only, top of the tabs. It's only in tabs. It's complete horseshit. Oh. Hey, here's some promoted stuff at the top of your, at the top of your folder. I don't want promoted stuff in email. Google's already useless as a search engine because the whole top page is promoted bullshit. There's got to be a Google uh, Chrome extension to get rid of those ads, don't you think? I, I just, I'm just going to stop using email. <laughs> don't bother me Good send luck. send a paper letter all right are we done here we're done uh, have an outro outro song imperialist rex let's do it hi there i didn't see you Pass it. he's like more more like <laughs> right in the veins like <laughs> give me more dragons dragons in the veins um I'm salivating just hearing about it. <laughs> it's because we're tried hungry. It and I didn't like it. That was a good pregnant pause. Oh, I'm I think, so hungry. I think I believe that one already, but it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good can one. we go get a ridiculous French uh, sandwich? Let's do it.